Hello and welcome to the first episode of this Shaper tutorial series. Today we will do a quick rundown through all of Shaper parameters one by one and we will get the first taste of how they sound. In the following episodes we will combine them and see how they cooperate and create unexpected timbers. Let's get started. Shaper is a device that changes a waveform shape. It does that through seven sections. All the parameters have precise symbols, but if we prefer to follow textual labels, we can swap interfaces through this button here. To edit a parameter, we click and drag the virtual knob around it. A readout will display the current value. If we need a more precise editing, we can dial the value straight into the readout. We can double-click a parameter anytime to reset it to its default value. To understand the signal flow, we just follow this line from left to right. We start our shaping with a gain control, and we finish with a filter and a dry-wet balance control. In the middle we have four shaping tools, Gate, Shaper, Transform and Resonator. Their main feature is that we can rearrange them to obtain different results. We will see how to combine and arrange them in the following episodes, so stay in touch. For now, we will start our exploration from the three fixed parameters, and then we will move on to the four arrangeable ones. The gain control sets the amplitude of the incoming signal. It can either increase it if the signal is weak or reduce it if it is too hot. This parameter here has a significant impact on the main shaper section, so it is essential to familiarize with it. The dry-wet parameter defines the blend of the unprocessed and processed signal. At its leftmost position we hear just the dry sound. At the rightmost position we hear just the sound of Shaper. Today we will keep it like this to better hear what Shaper does. Before the dry-wet control there is the filter. We can rotate it to the left to cut the high frequencies and to the right to cut the low ones. The more we rotate the virtual knob, the lower or higher the cutoff frequency will be, respectively. By default, the first arrangeable parameter that we see is the gate control. This parameter works oppositely to a clipping circuit. Instead of chopping the extremes of our waveforms, it chops the central part. By rotating the knob, we set a bipolar threshold for the upper and lower peaks. In the upper peak, the gate leaves untouched the part of the waveform above the threshold and chops to zero everything below. In the lower peak, it is the same, but mirrored. Such a chopping is immediate, and sometimes it may sound too harsh. For this reason, the smooth parameter provides a controllable integration that smoothens the transition to zero. The result is an excellent glitchy sound. This section names the whole device, and it is probably the most noticeable. It provides five ways of changing our waveform shape. The first four are different wave shaping functions that introduce non-linearities in the waveform paths. On each of these four, the first parameter here defines the balance between processed and unprocessed sound, while the second one defines the wave shaping amount. Each of these four functions has a unique flavor, from warm distortion to metallic overtones. The fifth option is a peculiar bit crusher, and it is the only shaping tool that doesn't have a dry-wet control. Instead, the two parameters regulate the bit depth and the sampling frequency. Another way of thinking about it is to imagine a grid to which we approximate our waveform. The thicker the grid, the more detailed is the wave shape. This control here reduces the number of grid rows, while this other one reduces the number of grid columns.
This section is a sort of wave folder. First, we increase the signal's amplitude by a ridiculous amount through this knob. Then, we select how the waveform should change once it exceeds the levels of minus 1 and plus 1. We have four options. The first one, called Clip, just clips the waveform once its amplitude goes past the threshold. The other three, on the other hand, start to fold the waveform on itself in different ways. The more complex our source signal, the more folds and harmonics the transform section will generate. For this reason, the three transform functions called wrap, fold and s-fold will provide harsher or milder wave folding techniques. If you are already familiar with tap, these symbols might ring some bell. This section here is a straight delay line with controls over delay time and feedback like we saw on tap. We can hear the delay effect when we use a long time scale, but if we reduce the delay time, the repetition will be too fast for us to perceive them individually. Instead, they will start to have a distinct frequency similarly to what happens with car plus strong synthesis. Such a frequency is what makes our sound resonate and the feedback level defines the resonation length. In this first episode we familiarized with shaper structure and learned the fundamentals of its many sections. To unleash its full potential, however, we need to combine these sections and play with their position in the signal flow, but also try Shaper with various kinds of source material. This will be the topic of the next episodes, so if you want to know more, feel free to subscribe to our channel and stay in touch with us through our social media.